Welcome to Kitchen Table Talks. I'm your host, Stephanie Seaton. The purpose of these table talks is to have an informal chat with those who have shaped the field of bioethics and to provide information about educational opportunities for those who, like me, are interested in learning more. This is episode five, the five-year program in bioethics, featuring a discussion with staff, faculty, and several graduates of the program. This is brought to you by Wake Forest University's Bioethics Graduate Program. We're so glad you're here. Please pull up a chair and join us. Thank you everyone for joining me on Kitchen Table Talks today. We're gonna to go through and have everyone introduce themselves, um, if that's okay. Anna, we'll start with you. I'm Anna Iltis and I'm the, the Carlton Professor of University Studies and a professor in the philosophy department at Wake Forest. And I also direct the undergraduate bioethics, humanities and medicine interdisciplinary minor and teach in the graduate program in bioethics. And so because of that, I know a lot of both our graduate students and our undergraduate students, and I love making that connection with people. Great, thank you. A familiar face, Vicki. Hello, my name is Vicki Zickman, and I am the Associate Director for the graduate program. And it is a pleasure to see all of our alumni and um, look forward to hearing what folks have to say about our five-year program. Great, thank you. Harriet. I'm Harriet Hall. Um, I graduated from Wake Forest in undergrad in 2019 and then from the master's program in 2020. I just, and then I just finished my first year of medical school at the Medical University of South Carolina. Very exciting. Krishna. Hi, I'm Krishna Chopra. I graduated from Wake undergrad in 2020 and then like Harriet continued on, um, I guess we all did five-year program. Um, just graduated with my master's. So thanks for including me. Yay. And Michael. I'm Michael Hanamarian. I graduated from Wake Forest undergrad in 2017. Uh, continued on, uh, got the master's in 2018, and I'm currently in pharmaceutical consulting and market research at IQVIA as an associate consultant. Oh, wow. Great. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, First, we're going to have Vicki just give a high-level description of the five-year bachelor's master's program. Thank you, Stephanie. So the five-year bachelor's master's program is an opportunity for Wake Forest University undergraduates to begin their graduate studies in bioethics during their senior year and then finish one year afterwards. This allows the student to save one, at least one semester or a semester in a summer. I mean, and really it's an opportunity for our students, um, for our undergraduate students to start engaging with the graduate program earlier and to save time as well as a little tuition money. Great, thank you. Um, let's start with Anna. Why should the Wake Forest University undergraduates consider applying to be part of this five-year program? I know that you have a big influence over many that have that have gone through this program? Well, I think it's a really valuable opportunity. I mean, I was part of creating the opportunity and I think it's a great way for students who have discovered this interest in bioethics to be able to pursue it in more depth um, and to be able to pursue it in more depth earlier. So I, I found that a lot of students come to Wake Forest, they might know a little bit about bioethics or they might know nothing about bioethics, but when they start sort of putting together all of these pieces, they find that they've got some really um, great interest in learning more and more and more. And there is only so much time in an undergraduate uh, curriculum to do that. And there's only so much time, uh, there's only so much depth that an undergraduate course can go into rather than a graduate level seminar with fewer people and lots of rich discussion. So I think it's really an opportunity for students to begin very early um, on to, to exploit their kind of interests in all of these great areas and great topics. Um, and it does of course save some time, which helps students who are um, looking to the next opportunity and need to need to finish in a timely fashion. So I think that's one piece of it. Um, I think there are a lot of students who come to Wake Forest very clear about what they want to do. For example, they know they really want to study medicine or they really want to study law. And then they realize that there's so much more to those disciplines than what they thought. Um, and the graduate program allows them to connect a lot of dots before continuing on uh, to those to those other opportunities. Um, and then in some cases, they come very knowing very clearly what they want to do, and they discover that they're not so clear on what they want to do. And in fact, they have other interests. Um, and this is a way to explore some of those other interests and perhaps determine how they better want to connect 
um, their undergraduate education with future career opportunities. So I think those are some of the, the advantages. Um, I also love the fact that it allows undergraduate students to be in classes with everyone from people who are recently um, have recently completed an undergraduate degree to everyone up through people who are you know ex very experienced healthcare professionals uh, to sit and study together to me is a great opportunity for for our undergraduate students so I really value the program and um, I love that so many Wake Forest students have taken this opportunity to be double deeks. That's a good way to put it. Um, I know you mentioned law and medicine. Are there other majors that you think should consider doing this, this program? One of the things that I love about the way that this program is designed is that students can major in anything as an undergraduate. So there is no requirement that they be in any particular major. They don't even have to be in the bioethics, humanities, and medicine interdisciplinary minor, or, although many of them do pursue that. Um, so the idea that students can major in anything, we've had psychology, sociology, religion, English, history, philosophy, I mean, anything, um, biology, people can be majors in anything and, and make this program work. And I love that. Um, there's many students who are interested in public health, students who are interested in biomedical research, all different kinds of, of considerations um, sort of come together in bioethics. And so people meet in the classroom. Um, and I love that. Great. Definitely something that I've enjoyed meeting all these people, even though I'm not part of the five-year program per se. Uh, I've enjoyed having these people as my um, classmates. So uh, Krishna, what was your background as an undergrad and why did you consider the five-year program? I was a psych major undergrad, so I really enjoyed all those classes. Um, but I was starting to take a few history classes, philosophy classes, things like that, and became really interested in bioethics and then realized that there was an entire world out there. Again, I came into college not really knowing what that was or anything like that. Um, and for me, ultimately wanting to pursue a career in healthcare, I thought that was a really good way to bridge that together. And I really liked being able to bring that knowledge um, from one discipline to the other. Great, thank you. Michael, how about you? What was your undergrad experience and why did you consider and participate in the five-year program? I was a biology major undergrad um, and at Wake being a liberal arts university, you have to knock out quite a few other sort of core requirements aside from your major. And I dabbled in a bioethics class, undergrad class with Dr. Cadillac. Um, and I was like, wow, I really enjoyed this. I'd been on my honors and ethics council in high school. Um, so I was always sort of interested. And I also being in a household of lawyers, always interested in those uh, moral dilemmas and debates. So the bioethics class, I thought was just going to be sort of a fun class to take. And then uh, sort of combining my interest for science with that bioethics class, all of a sudden I hear there's a bioethics master's and the four in one was pretty much a, a no brainer at that point. Great. Adding bioethics to a house full of lawyers. I'm sure there were some interesting kitchen table talks of your own. Yes, and you never win, but that's okay. Never win. Never uh, winning. Oh. <laughs> Harriet, how about you? What did you uh, major in as an undergrad and why did you pursue the five-year program? Yeah, um, so I was a bio, biology major as well. Um, and I kind of always knew I wanted to go to med school. That was always kind of the path. And then I took Dr. Elvis's um, intro course as an undergrad and just was kind of overwhelmed by just, oh my goodness, so many situations. And I just felt like I needed a lot more time to think about it and to kind of follow this interest before I kind of um, dived into med school. Um, and really glad I did because med school is like super fast paced and there's no time <laughs> to think about any of these issues in depth. So yeah, great. Thank you. Michael, you mentioned you're in the pharmaceutical industry. How are you using the skills you've got uh, gained in your five-year program? I now? feel like a lot of times when you think about bioethics and you think about the pharmaceutical industry, you think about them often at odds with each other, which is totally fine. And I also see that myself. I don't work for a pharmaceutical company. I work for uh, a larger research and clinical trials firm, which is IQVIA. Uh, so of course I can't help but think when I'm doing some of these studies and consulting about some of the issues I've learned, uh, but definitely some of the advantages that have played my way is I think my team uh, 
recognizes that interesting background that I have that a lot of people in my industry don't necessarily have. And they sort of rely on that unique sort of problem solving skill that you sort of uh, develop and hone, even in just like, I guess you could call it two years or a year and a half in the program, whatever we want to call it. Um, I, because of my ability to write, um, they allowed me to sort of hop in one of a paper that was published in ASCO very, very recently. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I use it every day. It's not necessarily talking about right to die all the time, but that sort of training is always in use. Great, thank you. Krishna, how are you applying it in your life? Well, I just graduated, so not much yet, um, but looking forward to, again, applying a lot of those concepts and everything that we've learned. I mean, I did the bioethics minor as an undergrad, so for now almost five years, um, trying to pull that knowledge together and bringing it into whatever lies next. Right. And Harriet, you mentioned you're in medical school. Of course, that applies. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I've been shocked how much my like bioethics background has really informed like how I go about medicine in general and really changed that. Um, I think I'm just maybe different from my classmates and that I've had time to really think about issues like informed consent and kind of see the patient as a bigger picture than just like the health record. Um, and I think that it's helped me, um, not, I don't wanna say just like to get ahead, but it's helped me feel more comfortable like in that environment and to feel like I'm offering a unique perspective. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I said before, like these are issues that take time to think about before you can really like have an opinion or feel knowledgeable and talking about them. And you just don't get that kind of time anywhere else unless you do a program like this. And I think it's just really invaluable. Great, thank you. I wish more physicians would have that kind of training as well. I think, we lose the patient sometimes in our treatment. Um, Vicki or Anna, either of you or both of you, do you know of any other students who have um, completed or want to pursue the five-year program and, and how they're applying it? Sure, I think there are lots of them um, at this point. I can't remember actually how many graduates we've had, um, but I, I think people have gone in a number of different directions. And that is one of the things that I really do um, value that uh, the, as, as these um, alums have shared with us, they, they, the skills, the knowledge, the experience is uh, useful in lots of different settings. And um, so we've had students go on to work um, in clinical research. Um, Michael mentioned on the consulting side, there's other, other sort of ways in which students are involved in that. Um, other students who've gone on to medical school and so on. So, so lots of different opportunities, law school also um, in that group. And so uh, I love to see how people take knowledge and skills and transfer them. And everyone keeps talking about that is the wave of the future for jobs, right? People don't stay in the exact same position or even the same career lifelong. And really the idea that you learn skills and ways of thinking and reasoning that you can apply in a number of different settings uh, is so valuable and so important. And I think um, Harriet, Michael, and Krishna have all kind of shared a little bit about that today. And I think some of our alumni who've been out longer would have even more to say um, and other examples to offer. So. Right. Thank you. Anything to add, Vicki? That was pretty good. I would just say it's heartening to hear Harriet talking about taking her experience in the bioethics program into medical school. And um, I want to say, yay, we did it. You know, uh, when we talk with um, potential applicants who are interested in pursuing medicine, I always use the phrase, that we hope that you will be a different, dare I say better, but at least a different type of physician um, after this experience and once you go into medical school. And so it is heartening to hear Harriet's comments. Great, thank you. The last thing I ask when we're wrapping up is if you have any hobbies. So Michael, let's start with you. General hobbies, anything. <laughs> Okay, let me see. I guess since the pandemic started, um, you sort of have a lot of time you save from having to commute to work and everything else. Uh, so I've started reading for pleasure again, which is something I hadn't been able to do, I feel like for a while. Um, 
So that's been fun. I also play a lot of sports and I'm an avid sports watcher as well and don't want to talk about the Sixers. So um, I also like hiking uh, and yeah, going to the beach, I guess, if you want to call that a hobby. I'm a jazz fan and I also don't want to talk about it. So I understand. <laughs> um, Harriet, how about you? I know you're in medical school, so not a lot of time for hobbies, but yeah, yeah, not a ton of time. Um, I've started playing tennis again, though, which has been a lot of fun. Um, working on my scuba diving certification, so that's like going to take a while <laughs> to find the time to do that. Um, yeah, and also just going to the beach and hanging out with my family. So exciting. I need some beach days in my life. Krishna, how about you? I've been doing a lot of baking, so I don't know if that's necessarily a productive hobby. Um, but yeah, lots of baking, lots of flour, sugar, butter <laughs> going on in my house. Um, and dancing. I've been going back to that too, which has been really fun. Nice. Yes. would like to share some of that too in the future. Um, what kind of things are you baking? Everything. Everything. Um, bread, cake, cookies. Probably going to track try to tackle croissants at some point this summer. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'll have to give you my new address. Anna, how about you? I think Krish and I would make a good pair because I love to cook, but I do not love to bake. Um, baking requires a lot of precision and it's supposed to be fun. I don't want to have to measure every detail, so, but I love to cook. And that's actually something I've really missed is having a house full of people over the last year and a half or so. So I look forward to, to being able to do more of that. I also love to read um, and have become part of several book clubs. Um, that was certainly something that uh, I was part of before, but I think the pandemic created some more Zoom book club opportunities. And uh, so I enjoy that. And um, I really love staying in touch with my students. I wouldn't call that a hobby in particular, but it is something I spend a lot of time doing um, and staying in touch with um, both current and, and uh, former students and sort of making a point to, to stay in touch with people. They are fun. I still am in touch with students that I had many years ago. So I completely understand. I appreciate you again, taking part in this. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and we look forward to sharing it with others. Have a good day, everyone.